morning. Glad you're here. Look forward to God speaking through our hearts from his word and through song. Uh, we got a, a younger version of uh, Randy and Lisa here this morning, and uh, they're not nervous at all. So just, uh, there's no need to pray for them. They, they're all good. <laughs> just kidding. I uh, can imagine you being up here, right? Oh, okay, there you go. So anyway, glad they were willing, amen, yeah. to fill in, and uh, yeah. uh, God's going to bless them, amen, yes. Yes. so we're glad for that, let's pray, Father, grateful for who you are, thank you, God, for letting us be here, giving us the health and strength uh, to be able to get out of bed, Lord, we know these are things, Father, that we take for granted, we think uh, all the time, Father, everything's going to work, and then when it doesn't, Father, then it's when we begin to think about it, and we don't want to be that way, Father, we want to thank you and praise you. For the breath that we breathe, the, 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 the being able just to do what we do, uh, Father, we just uh, we know, Father, we should be humble. Oftentimes we're not, but Father, it should humble us, God, that you even allow us to live. As sinful as we are, but Father, we know in all of that. You know all these things. Father, you've made us new. You've made us new creations. Father, we have within us a nature that does not sin. We're thankful for that, God. We're thankful for the new nature, Father. That we can live, Father, that way. We can choose daily, Father, who we're going to follow. Ourselves or you. Father, we're thankful, God, for that choice. God, we're thankful, God. Even in that, it humbles us, Father, to think, Lord, that you've given us this opportunity. And so we pray today, Father, you'd speak to our hearts through the word of God, through song. Father, we do pray that you would bless uh, Dalton and Susanna. And uh, we pray you give them what they need as they lead us today in music. And uh, we pray, Father, again, that thy will be done throughout the day. So, God, we just want to magnify and glorify you. We want you to have the preeminence in our hearts and in this service. We pray this in Christ's name and for his sake. All God's people said, Amen. 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 Good morning. If you all stand and sing uh, 492 at Calvary.
Yes. Excellent job. I appreciate that. I appreciate y'all doing that. All right, Brother Paul, pray for us, please, sir, if you would. Father, we thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy, without which we wouldn't even be here today. We take so much for granted, Lord. Help me not to take God all these things for granted. Help me, Lord, to be thankful. Help me not just to say it, Lord, but truly within my heart to be thankful for sure. all that you do. Help us. You do. You The plan that you made that is outlined in this song for our salvation, Lord. Mm -hmm. Lord, thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Lord, we, we pray, Lord, that you would help us to be grateful, Lord. And Lord, help the pastor as he gives a message today that he delivers exactly what you want him to say and then Lord help us to hear it. Help us Lord. And then Lord do one more thing. Help us to respond in a way that will be pleasing to you. Yes. Lord we just thank you for all these things. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you my brother. All right. Our teacher of the week is Miss Andrea in uh, the children's class. Appreciate her. Say amen. 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 And uh, appreciate all of our teachers and continue to lift them up. Uh, Linda McKeever is our missionary of the month. Pray for her and the ministry God has called uh, her to in the more regional hospital. Uh, continue to pray or pray for them, lift them up. And then don't forget uh, October 13th uh, and the 20th, we choir practice at 4:30. Uh, Doug and Ethan have birthdays this this week, and uh, so praise God for that. And do uh, again as uh, Daryl had said, uh, maybe you can send them a card, a text, something uh, to let them know uh, happy birthday. Ben, the mule train uh, for Hannah. We appreciate uh, all that you've done there and uh, will continue to do uh, to bless there. We appreciate the meals that have already been given. All right, Brother Dalton. Stand and sing again. We'll uh, do number 685, Footsteps of Jesus. Amen.
Jesus, but they don't always go where we want them to go, do they? So we have to ask God uh, to help us. Well, we appreciate your prayers for the trip that we took to, to Boston. And uh, uh, God bless the trip, and uh, we appreciate all that he did there. Uh, supposed to go back in four weeks, uh, the week of the uh, 14th of October. Uh, but just continue to pray, Lord. Uh, we continue to give uh, grace and mercy. Just so many, so many little things that, that God did and uh, is doing, and big things. We, we just appreciate. Uh, just again, we never at the beginning of this. I was talking to Karen this morning. We we never. This was uh, from what we understood a very minute possibility that, that Hannah would be able to be in this study. And uh, the way God worked all that out is just beyond our comprehension. We we don't understand all those things, um, but. Uh, for Hannah and herself, of course, you, you're not able to see what's going on, but uh, really Hannah's declining. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not uh, what you want to see. Um, she really needs our prayers. Uh, and just all of us around it, you know, it's, you know, it's easy. You know, and one, it's just one of those things, you know, that we know God is in control. You know, we know that. And, uh, but yet, your eyesight what you see and it causes your feelings you know and the different things that go on within you and uh, I like what Daryl talked about this morning at Open Assembly I read that devotional myself uh, this uh, half of the rainbow that we see uh, I know I know we see half the picture folks and I told the Sunday school class this morning you know we um, we're going to the beach a week from yesterday we're going to take off Saturday and we don't know. We don't. We're not, you know, this is something that Hannah loves the beach. and um, We have a desire for she and Jesse and the kids to have just a, a great time. You know, just... <laughs> so, you prepare for these things, you know, and we don't know this. We don't know if this will be our last trip. That's just true, folks. That's reality. Yeah. We, we don't know. Um, but we also know that it may not be. So if I can describe to you the roller coaster of emotions, you know, to try to prepare for both, you know. Uh, uh, but just, again, your prayers are appreciated uh, that God would just help us to, to navigate uh, through. Um, and I said to the uh, open assembly this morning, and I mean this, what's really helped me is to pray for others to lift other people up in prayer uh, because there's pl plenty of people folks yeah. and, and, and life does not stop right. with you Amen. it doesn't stop with me Amen. we must understand that there, there's more you know and we appreciate you know the, the prayers and, the, and, and continue to bring them Amen. continue to give us comfort and talk to us and those kind of things we, but at the same time there's other people we understand we do we understand there's other people and needs and different things that people are going through and uh, you know that that song that we just what, what a beautiful song the end there that one day these footprints hey praise God are going to end at his throne praise the Lord and around that throne again as Daryl said this morning is a circular rainbow amen it, it you know that you know the song complete in thee Amen. What what a what an awesome thought, right? That we're complete in Christ. Amen. But down here, folks, listen, you just don't see it, you know, like we should see it. But there's going to be a day, amen, where we're all going to be fully healthy, fully healed, and uh, praise be to God, all because of Him, uh, that that's going to take place one day. So we thank God uh, for that. All right, let's certainly pray for Sam Holt. Lift, 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 lift him up and his family, you know, just all that. Uh, let me say this to you too, folks. Listen, you find out that you really, uh, when you go through something yourself, you find out you really didn't have compassion like you should have had for other people. Amen. So, uh, it's just the truth, folks. Amen. And I'm just trying to be raw and transparent with you. It's God showing me that, you know, you just, you know, you, you just didn't have the compassion that you needed to have for other people. And so there's, there is, there is, uh, this is not, all of our family would not choose to go through this. 
But there is, there is good, right things to learn about yourself and about others and, and, and those kind of things. And so God help us uh, to pray for Sam and his family and all the, you know, the years that they have gone through uh, with, with, with Sam and uh, just uh, doing everything they can to try to help him. Uh, I did talk to Miss uh, Elva yesterday. Uh, I had to get off the phone a little quickly. Somebody just pulled up in my driveway. I was out uh, taking a walk Karen called me and I looked over and there's somebody in my driveway that blew the horn, jumped out, and started screaming at the house. <laughs> so, right, no, I'm like, okay, I'm not sure who this was. And I tried to get back as quick as I could and I had to tell myself, I said, I got to go. I said, I got a little problem at the house. And uh, so anyway, we got back and they never came back, but uh, kind of strange, don't you think? A little weird. And uh, I, I, I'm actually hoping they had the wrong house and they don't come back. And, uh, but anyway, uh, I got to talk with Miss Elva, and she's keeping everything under control down there. She, you know, I always <laughs> say, I say, I'm going to speak to the boss. <laughs> and she, she laughs and laughs and laughs. I say, you making sure everybody's okay down there? Well, I'm trying, you know. So anyway, I uh, did talk to Shirley yesterday. I didn't talk to Miss Gray. Miss Gray was having breakfast, but I did talk to Shirley, uh, Miss Gray's daughter. And she's doing all right, and uh, so just continue to pray for her. I uh, talked to Jeanette. A little bit ago, not today, but uh, anyway, continue to pray for her and lift her up uh, to the Lord in prayer. And uh, of course, all these others on our prayer list, uh, especially those that that don't know the Savior, that don't know the Savior. This is, you know, God has to help us with this. You know, I don't know. I know that in every situation, ultimately, God wants us to give glory to Him. Mm -hmm. That's what God wants. You know. Are we giving glory to him? Are we giving him praise and glory? I don't know exactly what that means in our situation, but I'm asking God, God, help us. Help us to just give glory to you, to be able to, to do that and, and count it a blessing to be able to do that. And uh, no, do, I do know that God wants to save souls. Amen. God does want to save souls. God, uh, God is not willing that any man should perish. That's long-suffering, amen. And uh, he wants all men to come to repentance. And so pray that God would help us to be that witness and the testimony of his grace and his mercy as we meet different people in different places, uh, not just here, but the other places that we go. Amen. All right. How's Keith doing? He's doing pretty well. Okay. Uh, all right. Good. Any prayer requests? So, of course, Carol Wilson has mentioned this morning that we have to have a, a, a pacemaker put in, so let's pray there. Uh, Lindsey Scarlett was mentioned this morning with the knee getting out of place, and uh, Gene Wilson was mentioned this morning had, had, had fallen, and uh, then uh, I think it was Crystal Graham, is that right? My husband died of a heart attack uh, suddenly. Um, uh, let's, let's, let's pray there for them. Uh, that was mentioned. wrote this down, but it looks like something Foster. No. I don't know what it is. It might, it might be faster. <laughs> Maybe I said I need to go faster. <laughs> That's probably not true. Right, Ma Jane? I probably need to go slower. Any other requests? Yes, sir. We have a sister-in-law that had to be carried to the emergency room this week thinking it was her heart, but they kind of, the EKG was good, so they sent her back home and gave some medication thinking maybe something else, but pray for her. She's still having some continuing pain. Okay, what's her name? Shelby Dean. Shelby Dean. All right, let's pray for Shelby Dean. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. And I had to give prayer requests earlier for my cousin, Rhonda Whaley, that has pneumonia. Rhonda Whaley. Okay, there's that. Okay, Rhonda Whaley with pneumonia. I missed that one right there. Rhonda, pneumonia. Yes, Chad. Uh, my mom had surgery. Hip surgery on the 30th. All right, let's pray for Chad's mom. Yes. Um, Greg has his permanent um, stimulator. Certainly 
pray for Greg. Uh, he has his permanent stimulator put in his leg there, and then most of all, pray for his salvation. Any others? Yes, Sherry. I have a couple. I have an unspoken. <clears throat> and then mom, still do that one. Um, had some blood work this week. That was good. Evidently, they wanted her to get a PET scan for a couple of years, but didn't tell her. Um, they're doing blood work this time. It was okay. They said they can get through more months, but then she also has other things going on. We understand that she's in stage three kidney failure. She's not acknowledging that, but just pray for her, please. Okay. All right, we'll certainly pray for Sylvia Fowler's situation there with this stage three kidney failure mm -hmm. and the other things with the blood. And Sherry's unspoken. Speaking of, yes, sir. You would pray for our son and daughter-in-law, Travis and Ashley. They're out of town and they should be flying back in today. All right, let's pray for Travis and Ashley. They travel back in town. Speaking of the blood and the cross, you know, the cross is everything. Uh, really, you know, now we know Jesus is not still on the cross, but it's the work that was done there. And the person that could only do that work was the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we... Just again, <laughs> everything that God has done, and uh, Karen's writing a lot of these things down. I'm just trying to keep it on my grind, on my mind, you know, and try to, as God leads, to to, to tell you these things. I went to the uh, rental car place. Uh, of course, I we didn't know whether we were going to get on the plane or not. We were the last two on the plane, <laughs> and uh, they had to check my bag there. And uh, anyway, you're in a rush, you know. They said, they said. And, and really, it's kind of sad. This other couple just, they stayed right there at the gate, you know, uh, just waiting, you know, back and forth. And we're over here just sitting down, you know. And uh, and the guy says, Robert and Karen shut. And, uh, and they look, look at those two folks and said, are y'all Robert and Karen shut? And I said, no, no, that's that's us. <laughs> and, uh, so anyway, we had to rush to get on the plane. And so I, I got the, the rental car while I was on the plane, because I wanted to make sure of the timing and all that. And anyway, long stuff with that. And uh, they, we read these rental car things, and they say how horrible they are and terrible. And we haven't had a bad experience yet. And we might have one later, and that's okay. The Lord knows. And so anyway, I got this nice, this guy was super, super nice, oh, super nice. And he says to me, he says, he says, why don't we, we're trying to get a full-size car, because we wanted to, it's hard to get Hannah into a car, you know, those kind of things. And so anyway, he says, I don't have a full-size car. He says, but I can give you an upgrade to a, a Ford Escape, a SUV, you know. That, well, and I said, oh, man. I said, you know, those are a little high, you know, as far as lifting for, for Jesse to be able to get her in. And he said, okay, that's okay, man. That's all right. He said, that's okay. He said, I'll get you a luxury car. <laughs> and he said, I'll give you a double upgrade. I said, okay, okay. So he got me a 2025 Volvo. <laughs> and uh, so that's what we drove around in, folks. And, and I, first and foremost, we know nothing about these luxury cars. I blew them, I had the horn blowing inside the thing there because I was trying to figure out the key. And all it starts by itself and all these other things. And, and you know me already. I'm, I'm, I'm me. <laughs> so, it's going to be stuff like this, you know. And I like with this preacher that had this. Uh, now this is this is the choir singing right now, okay? <laughs> this is inner inter This is the choir. So we see they have choir. So we're, this is going to be the intervention here. And uh, and so we're trying to work all these things out with this crazy vehicle, you know. Whole way couldn't get the air conditioning to work, you know, because it's it's all you either speak or touch it or it's got the little knob for the for the gear shift. And, it's wild, you know. I don't want one. Let me just tell you that. Unless it'll, it'll be Bobby featured, you know, that we'll be able to use it. And we still don't know how to use it on it. And uh, and so anyway, we're driving this, and then I'm thinking, I didn't get the insurance on this thing, <laughs> you know. I, I, you know, but anyway, that's another story. We won't tell you about that. But we drove around this thing on Sunday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Wednesday we went, uh, of course. Uh, Hannah had to spend a night Tuesday, and she's going to get out Wednesday, later on that uh, Wednesday, around 1 or 2 or so. And so we, we decided to, to go to Fenway Park, and 
I was able to go to Fenway Park and uh, walk around and different things, ate, and, and uh, we come back to the car, folks, and I open the door for Karen on the passenger side, and on the side of the seat, did you take a picture of this? Yeah, I did. I was looking on, looking on my camera. I did. There is a small, little gold cross. And we're like, who got in our car? <laughs> who put this here? We hadn't seen this the whole time, folks. Thinking about, you know, all the different things that are going on and just, just all these things. And as soon as I put her in the car, right there it is. Right on the side, this little, you know, like cloth-like thing, this golden cross. And what we said, when we saw that cross, we said, this is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. It's about the cross. Yes. It's about the cross. We can't bear Jesus' cross. He bore that, amen. But he said, if any man follow after me, let him take up his cross. Mm -hmm. Deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Yes. And what a beautiful reminder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. That uh, all these things, everything, it goes back. Praise be to God, man sinned in the garden. Not praise be to God that man sinned, but, but that God had a plan all along to bring man back to himself. Yes. We talked about that in Sunday school this morning. Two times, or two different things that, that Paul mentions to the Colossian church there. He says that you've been redeemed, <laughs> amen, by the blood the of his cross. You've been bought back off the slave market of sin, amen. And then you've been reconciled, amen. You, you know, we sing that song during Christmas time God and sinners reconciled. God, <laughs> the Bible says there, the Apostle Paul says that he made peace by the blood of his cross, amen. I know that there's blood that is in us, right? Mm -hmm. Physical blood. Mm -hmm. But it's the spiritual. It's the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That, that uh, will live. I don't know how all that's going to be, by the way, folks. However, our new bodies. And what one guy was saying, he's talking about, well, are you going to be this age or that age? And, you know, folks, we're not going to be thinking about any of that when we get there. Amen. It's going to be, we're going to be like him. Amen. So all these physical ailments, these spiritual ailments, everything that's going on, right? You know, sin complicates things. But the gospel simplifies things. Amen. Not just the death, burial, resurrection of Christ, but all that entails. Amen. Oftentimes Paul calls out to God that he is he's Jehovah Rapha. Amen. And he is. He has not changed. He's still the healer. Amen. He can still, and he, if his will to heal, he'll heal. But ultimately, ultimately, by his stripes, we are healed. Amen. And we do have, uh, Paul says, though the outward man perish, perisheth, the inward man is renewed day by day. And it ought to be that way. It ought to be that way. God help us, right? Stephen, Bill, you pray for us, please, sir. Lord, we just come to you now, Lord, and thank you once again for the opportunity to be in your house today, Lord. And, you know, we have some members who are out today, Lord, and we just thank you so much for the ones that have stepped forward, Lord, and, yes. and stood in their place and done a wonderful job this morning, Lord. We thank you for that. Amen. Lord, we thank you for Pastor Bobby this morning and for the message you brought to him, Lord. And we just thank you for the word that he's going to give to us, Lord. And Amen. For the prayer request, we pray that your will be done in all things and in your way and in your time. We just thank you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, it's turn your Bibles. Do pray for uh, Randy and Lisa as they are traveling. Uh, I believe they're going on a, on a cruise. And uh, so just pray for them. Uh, if they do this, and, uh, they'll be back, I think, uh, uh, Saturday. And then the Nalls are on uh, vacation. Pray that they'll have a, a good vacation and they'll enjoy themselves and uh, be refreshed. You know, God, again, is teaching us uh, through this that, you know, uh, people need to uh, enjoy their lives and as God leads them. And, and, and we need to be excited for people, people that get healed. 
Amen. People that are able to go. And uh, we need to, in our own hearts, we need to ask God that we, we are, as Paul said again, folks, listen, we're sinful people. <laughs> we, you know, it's, it's bad, but it's also good that we can humble ourselves and say, God, help me to really be thankful. Yes. Do you want to pretend? It's, it's ridiculous, folks. We've got to quit pretending. Amen. And God's got to make these things real in our hearts and lives and that we're truthful. Amen. You know why? Because we all got to go home and be with ourselves. Right? Yes. And so if it's not real, folks, in here, it's, it's not going to be real out there. <laughs> not with all the problems and the difficulties that we have to face. Today, we're going to be looking at uh, kings of, of all things. And ultimately, though, we want to think about as we look at kings and how they're supposed to respond and do things, uh, we, we, want, we want to see uh, that... Um, uh, how the king of kings, amen, is always perfect. Now, we know in, 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 now what we would compare to a king today would be presidents, right? Our presidents. And, and uh, boy, if you look in the scriptures, folks, uh, uh, you know, there weren't too many. Matter of fact, listen, only half of the southern kingdom's kings were good. You all with me? Only half of them were good kings. I can't remember the number of now, right now. Does anybody else remember that? No, I think like 36, something like that. I can't remember. And then, then the kings of the northern tribe, there were none of them good. Right. There wasn't one king that wasn't wicked in the northern tribe. So, folks, the, 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 you know, we expect things, and, and uh, but, boy, don't expect too much out of the world. Right. <laughs> I mean... Now pray and seek God and do what you need to do. But at the end of the day, and again, we've seen over the last several years, you know, this, I won't count back, you know, to tell you, but we've had a lot of bad presidents. <laughs> it's just true. Huh? There have been a few, <laughs> very few good ones, quote unquote, right? And folks, listen. Now I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not too up to date. You know, with what's going on, I am to a certain extent, but I'm just telling you, this society has gone nuts. Amen. We're in a bad shape. God does. If, if America, again, is going to survive, God's got to raise somebody up again. That, that's true. And, and, and he might use to really for God to have mercy upon us and his grace to be bestowed upon us. Amen. And uh, as a nation, and uh, boy, you're going to see that that here that uh, the kings and what God uh, required of them and the way it's supposed to be, uh, leadership is so important, isn't it? Amen. 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 And, and and good leadership, now, folks. Listen, we know again if you if you have your eyes open, there there is one side and another side, and 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 one side again. You know, see, why are you saying all this? Because, I, you know, God wants me to. <laughs> That's okay. I don't, I don't always talk about these things because I believe God wants me to preach the Bible. And today, it, the subject matter is, <laughs> amen, what, what we're going to talk about. And, and, but there are, there is one that's better than the other. <laughs> it's just the truth. And we need to hear that, folks. But, but we're, in, we're in America. Now, folks, listen. We saw in the last election, about 50% were on this side, about 50% on that side, and that's about where we are now, 50%. And you think in your mind, now folks, listen, we're in America. And, and about 50%, and there's a whole lot more than 50%, of America has done gone crazy. Yeah. It's just like, wow, man. Folks, I never dreamed that we'd be in a, in a society where the people will ask us to, to pay for things by our money that we give in taxes for, for wicked, ungodly mess. It's insane where we are. But why are we there? That's, that's what's key, isn't it? Why are we there? Well, well, we know this. And see, oftentimes what we want to do, like everything else, is shirk our own responsibility. Yep. Right? Yep. Now, folks, listen, the truth of the matter is, as, uh, again, 
as the, 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 the church goes, usually so goes the world. Did Jesus Amen. not say that? Amen. You're the light of the world. You're the salt of the earth. Now, folks, listen. The gospel light. <laughs> are you with me? All you have to do is take our... Is this not a small sample group? It is. In comparison to other churches and other people. How's your light? Your gospel light? Are you sharing the gospel? Are, are you... Are you? Is that your focus in your life? Is, is God and the gospel and people, you know, not focused here on earth, but on heaven and, and, and the new earth and, and life and eternity? <laughs> no, let's just be honest. That's not where most people are focused. We're focused on everything else, right? Or am I wrong? I mean, I, I just, I'm trying to help. Now, some of you in here might, that might be your focus. But it is so easy, right, to blame somebody else other than ourselves. How much are we praying? How much are we seeking God? Now, folks, listen, isn't it easy to quote uh, uh, 2 Chronicles 7, 14? Isn't it? I mean, come on, If my people, you know, call by my name. Now, we can quote that all day. But the Bible says, if my people, and then it, then it, then it says, turn from their wicked ways. He's talking about the world turn from their wicked ways. It's talking about you and me. Amen. Right? And so you look at Israel's history, folks. Now listen. Really, the truth of the matter is, most of the people wanted it that way. With the wicked kings. And the people, you know, because their focus was on themselves. It wasn't about God and, and God getting glory and all those things. It was about themselves. And God help us, right? For God to change our hearts. Now, I told you already, I know one thing for sure with our situation with Hannah. This is all I know. I know that God wants us to bring glory to him. I don't know how. But just to be honest with you, I'm saying, God, I'm, I'm talking to God when I'm the place that I'm staying up in Boston. And, and I'm asking God, I'm saying, God, I don't know how. God, I don't know how. I don't know how, God. You have to help me. To know how you want me to bring glory to you. I do know that's in my heart. God, I also know I don't want to be in this situation. I want to be here, God. I want to be here, God. It's not where I want to be. But God, this is where you have me. And I want to bring glory to you. Some way, somehow. Teach me, God. God, help us. We, we expect kings to be righteous. But the real question is, are you righteous? Am I righteous? What do I really want, right? Well, folks, listen, these are questions we should ask ourselves, right? Yeah. Right? Can, can I get a, yes. a small amen? Amen. That, yes. that, that, that Lord, that you will help us to, to see. And so, he starts, and let's read verse 1 down, and we're going to try to go through verse uh, 15 uh, as far as uh, the preaching. Uh, the section is all about, you know, the kings. And, and ultimately, again, what I said I want us to do is focus on the king of kings and who he is. And, and uh, again, I, I didn't read this every day, but I am reading it, uh, uh, trying to read it more each day, uh, Proverbs 16, to, to get it in my own heart. He says, the preparations... Uh, in Proverbs 16, verse 1, the preparations of the heart and man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. The Lord hath made all things for himself, even, uh, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Everyone that is proud and hard is an abomination to the Lord, though hand joined in hand, he shall not be unpunished. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. A man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. 
And now verses 10 through 15 about, about kings. He said a, a divine sentence is in the lips uh, of the king. His mouth transgresseth not in judgment. A just weight and balance are the Lord's. All the weights of, uh, of the bag are his work. It is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness. For the throne is established in, uh, by righteousness. Righteous lips are the delight of kings. And they love him that speaketh right. The wrath of a king is as messengers of death. But a wise man will, will pacify it. In the light of a king's countenance is life. And his favor is as the cloud of latter rain. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful for who you are. Father, we pray, God, that you would speak to our hearts through this passage of Scripture. Father, we pray again, Lord, you would get glory and praise and honor. Father, we just uh, ask uh, again, uh, Lord, I, I know that I, I forgot to, to write down this passage of Scripture that I wanted us to look at this morning. I, I pray, Father, that I'd be able to at least uh, give them uh, the, the passage, Lord, if you see fit. And uh, we pray, God, again, that you'd bless uh, us uh, with your presence. We thank you that uh, you, uh, Lord Jesus, are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Father, and you always rule with righteousness. And, and everything you do is righteous and always will be. And uh, there's nothing you've ever done that was not right and righteous. And so we pray, God, that we would focus on the Lord Jesus, that he would be high lifted up, Father. And you would draw all men unto him. And you draw ourselves and our hearts and our lives uh, towards him. Father, we, we love you and praise you. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And you look in the Bible again as uh, you, you see these kings and, and uh, the, in the things that they did and did not do. Um, in this first, uh, first uh, verse here, verse 10, a divine sentence is in the, light, in the lips of the king and, and his mouth transgresseth not in judgment. Uh, one of the past scriptures that we were going to look at this morning, I'm pretty sure it's in 1 Kings. And if anybody knows where it is, we, we will turn there. And, uh, but I failed to write it down when it came to Solomon. And when God gave him the, the, the rule uh, in his, after his father, David, uh, he came to a situation early on and, uh, there with uh, two women. Uh, and uh, both of them had babies. And uh, one of the babies uh, had died in the night. And uh, one of the mothers had uh, switched the babies over and acted as if uh, her baby was living and the other mother's baby was dead. And they came before Solomon. Anybody know what that is? Three. Huh? Chapter 3, verse 15. Chapter 3, thank you. Thank you for, don't, don't know, even know who you are. But I appreciate you being here this morning and uh, helping us out there. <laughs> Amen. 1 Kings chapter 3. 1 Kings chapter 3. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Verse number 16. The Bible says, Then came two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him. And the one woman said, O oh my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house. And I was delivered of, of child with her in the house. And it came to pass the third day after I was delivered that this woman was delivered also. And we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, save we two in the house. And this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thine handmaid slept and laid in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which I did bear. And the other woman said, Nay, but the living is my son, and the dead is thy son. And this said, and, and, and this, and this said No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spake before the king. So the king has got a dilemma here, right? He, he was not there. Uh, he didn't know what took place. He just listened to two women telling him what took place, right? And, um, of course, the, the, the passage of Scripture that we just read, there is a, a, a divine sentence here that, that, that um, Solomon is going to give. And the king said, bring me a sword. 
And they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, divide the living child in two and give half to the one and half to the other. That's a crazy thing to say, isn't it? But there's a reason behind it and there's wisdom behind it, right? Because the king has discernment, obviously, and wisdom from God, or he should, right? Amen? And we know Solomon did. Then spake the woman whose living child was unto the king, her bowels yearned upon her son and said, O oh my Lord, give her the living child and, and, and in no wise slay it. But the other said, Let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. Now that's some real cruelty there, isn't it? Isn't it? And that's some real down-to-earth hatred. Amen. Right? In the heart. But do you realize that we all have that within us? That's a problem, isn't it? We all do. And God help us to understand that, but we don't, we don't believe that. We don't believe we could be like this. Yes, you, you have that kind of nature. God does not change the old nature. It's within you. But God's given you a brand new nature. And praise God for that, right? Praise God we can be like the other woman, right? And uh, even though uh, she might lose being able to raise this child, she wants the child living. Because she knows that's the right thing to do. Amen? Amen. But the king, and the king knew in his heart the right person would do the right thing. Amen? Notice what it says. And the king answered and said, Give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. Amen. Yeah. How do you know that? He wasn't there. He didn't see the birth. He knew from the heart. Yes. Amen? Do you realize, folks, it's the heart that matters? Yes. I read this morning, and I love, I love the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, I preached here at the church twice uh, in the Sermon on the Mount. And let, can I tell you something you, again, folks, about things? Remember I told you that I gave uh, Pastor Jerry Capps from Red Hill the book, Sermon on the Mount, uh, by uh, D. Martin Lloyd-Jones. I felt led to do that when we went to uh, Jeremy's wedding and went to church up there. And, and uh, this guy, <laughs> by the way, pray for him. He's having, he just had throat surgery and he's healing from it. And uh, he said that pudding and jello is going to be what he's going to be having for the next couple months. And, uh, but I've met a friend. What, what a, this is one of the things I told you about, examples of people that, I, you know, I, you only know, only God knows when you do things rightly and do what God would have you do as he leads you to do it, how blessed you're going to be in the future. And here this woman, folks, listen, and it's far greater than giving somebody a book, right? A pastor, Jerry, texts me every day, you know. And he's praying for me, and he and, and just he's, he wants to come sometime. Me and him have lunch together, and, and I just had a friend from one simple prodding of God to give a man a book. God has given me far greater. He's given me a friend in Christ. Praise Lord. This woman here, she was willing again to give up her birth child, but she didn't lose her birth child. She did right and gained back what was rightfully hers. Amen. And Solomon, again, he says, it's, she's the mother. But notice this. He said, and all of Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged, and they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment. Oh, Amen. my goodness, folks. If, if we would have a president... Uh, that would have the wisdom of God, how, how great America would be again. Amen. If we had a president. And we need one. That's right. We need somebody. But again, folks, I'm not going to go there. But I'm just telling you, God help us. On, 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 on all sides of this. I'm talking about all sides. God help us to, for God to actually, really and truly. Folks, listen, uh, I scratch my head on, on what's going on today. And, and we all have, listen, skeletons in our closet and things and stuff like that. And God help us, right? And uh, But I tell you, God can raise up somebody. Amen. God can. That, said that, that has a right heart towards God. Go back to Proverbs 16. A divine sentence is in the lips of the king, and his mouth transgresses not in judgment. 
Solomon obviously, again, made the right call here, right? But why? He had the wisdom of God. Amen. And folks, if there's anything that we need in our leaders is the wisdom of God. Now, let me tell you, your pastor, your pastor right here, as your under shepherd, under the Lord, needs the wisdom of God. There, there's so many things that uh, I see that, that, that I need to just say, God, we've got to depend upon you. Amen. Jesus is the head of the church, folks. Listen, and we need to do and desire what he wants. Amen. That's the way we should be. Not just in a country, but in a church. Amen. And in our homes, God, help us with that. But notice what he says here in verse 11. A just weight and a balance are the Lord's. All the weights of the bag are his work. You know, whatever God does, right? Ultimately, kings should be under the control of God. Amen. I'm telling you, everything will be okay. Amen. If, if God is in control of the person, that's the leader. That's right. Amen. Amen. God will, well, God will see fit. And we know the Bible is so clear. He said he raises up the just and the unjust. God, no matter who's in, in office or who's the king or who's the president, God is still in control. Now, I'm just going to tell you this, folks. That is hard to grasp. Yeah. And I tell you, let me just share something with you, being transparent. When you go through a terminal disease, when you, when you, when you see what you see, what we see, it's hard to grasp that God is in control. But it doesn't change the fact that God is in control. Yeah. You see, that's on me. That's not on God. And we all have to understand that. There's a lot of things going on that we wish there wasn't going on. But they are going on. That's reality. But we need to understand that, again, God knows. <laughs> Amen. God, anything the Bible in the New Testament tells us, every good gift and every perfect gift coming down from the Father of lights. Amen. Amen. There's not a one thing that goes on that's good and right that God's not in. Amen. Amen. He, he's the one that gets the glory and the praise and the honor. and We ought to be excited about that. And we ought to be excited about giving Him honor. Amen. 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 Giving Him praise. Notice he says in verse 12, it is an abomination. It's not just something bad. And folks, he said it's an abomination to, ki to kings to commit wickedness. For the throne is established by righteousness. Amen. Folks, listen. Do you understand? You can't go wrong by doing right. That's right. That's right. But again, listen to me. Politics is not going crazy. We do. You're exactly right. But we don't. We don't. That's just the truth, too. We don't. That is. And it's our responsibility. It is. And we will be judged. That's right. We will. God help us. You see, folks, listen. The, 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 the bottom line is this. We, 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 because it is we. We elect these officials, the ones that we elect, Okay, that tell us everything we want to hear. And then they get up there and they do exactly the opposite of what they told us they would do. Amen. God help us. So you know what we need to do? Not vote for them next time. <laughs> they don't care. Yeah, vote for somebody else. If they do the same thing, then vote for somebody else. God help us. These people say, well, you just don't understand Washington. Let me ask you something, folks. Did God call us to understand Washington? No, no, no. He called us to understand God. And that he's in control. Amen. And so you, these people that say, well, you have to do this to get this. You don't have to do wrong to get right done. Amen. This is, the Bible says the throne is established, the right throne, amen, is established by righteousness. Amen. Right? Amen. amen. How many of all of us? Now, let's not be too hard on politicians <clears throat> and those that are leaders in these kind of things. Let's talk about us. You know, well, we won't talk about us. <laughs> Actually, we want to talk about these politicians. We want to talk about all the stuff they do wrong. But you know, again, it's also abomination to you and I to do wrong to God yeah. and, and, and to, 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 to commit wickedness. God's not in that. Now, folks, listen. We got churches in America that are established by wickedness. 
Amen. That's crazy. And yet they say, we're all inclusive. We're this and we're that. You're like, what? They, have they ever picked up a Bible? But you know what they're going to do? They're going to rest the scriptures. Take the scriptures out of the way. Now, oftentimes they can point a finger at you and I because we're not loving and we're not kind and we're not what we're supposed to be like God has called us to be. But that still doesn't change the fact that, that the Bible still calls us to be righteous. Amen. God help us that people won't be able to point the finger at us and that, that we are living for God and we truly want to see people and we truly want to see a nation and churches and, 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 and cities and, and counties and, and, and all these different places that we want to see these places righteous. Amen. But you know where it starts, right? Right? It starts with you. It starts with me. Let's quit being critical of everybody else and start being more critical of ourselves. Let's see where we are. Notice what it says here in verse 13. Righteous lips are delight of kings. Now, a, a king that is righteous, he desires to have righteous people around him. <laughs> Amen. That's what it's saying here. Righteous lips are delight of kings, and they love him that speaketh right. Now, folks, listen to me. If a president or a king or anybody else is in position and they truly want to do right, y'all with me? They truly want to do right and yet they're waffling, you know, what to do to do right. If they truly want to do right and somebody comes to them and they says, hey, I think you probably should do this right here. But what do we do? We're like, well, that's, that's the king, man. <laughs> I can't talk to the president like that. Well, you can if God's in it. You're getting ready to find out the next verse. Plenty of people that did it in the Bible. I'm going to tell you about a few of them. You know why we don't do what we do? Because we're still in fear of our own lives. You see, the Bible says these martyrs in the scriptures, they, they, they love not their lives unto death. See, we love our lives too much. It might cost us. Yeah. But Jesus said, he that loses his life shall save it, and he shall save his life shall lose it. You need to be concerned about rightness rather than your life. Because you might have your life taken if you do right. Now, it's easy to say, isn't it? If somebody put in a gun to my head, I'd tell them I wouldn't deny Christ. Well, that's easy to say when nobody's pointing a gun at your head. Yeah. But I'm telling you now, if you ain't living for God, more than likely, you ain't going to you ain't gonna do that when a gun's to your head. Do you think, folks, if you're living life under freedom and, and right uh, 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 where you can just live and, 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 you know, you're not living for God? And living right, that you're going to live that way when the wickedness comes and they do put a gun to your head? No. I'm just telling you, it's not happening. God help us. But notice what he says here in verse number 14. The wrath of a king is as messengers of death. You see, in their day, listen, the king had what? Absolute authority. Exactly. You realize that, folks, we're, we're talking, we ain't talking about that in America. Now, unfortunately, some of this stuff goes on now behind closed doors that they have people killed. It does happen. But they can't just come and say, kill that man right now. Yeah, but they could. They could. He said, the wrath of the king is a message of death, but the wise man will pacify it. <laughs> He's not going to say, you can't kill me. You remember old uh, Nehemiah? Remember old Nehemiah? Y'all with me? You remember old Nehemiah? You, you, you folks back in that day, listen. <laughs> you, could, you couldn't even go over to king and have a sad face. <laughs> you, you had to be, hey, whether you were bubbly or not, <clears throat> you had to be bubbly in front of the king. You had to outwardly <laughs> conform no matter what was going on. Inside, And so Nehemiah, he risked his life, didn't he? Didn't he? 
right? What about Daniel? <laughs> Boy, right? What about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Y'all remember them? Hey Amen. what about them? You see, the king could, could, could have them put to death. But just you know what they did? They did wise in God's sight. I like what the Bible says about Daniel. He didn't start doing righteousness and doing right when the king made the decree that anybody doesn't bow down to him and his authority, that they were going to be thrown into the den of lions. He didn't, bow. He didn't start bowing then. He was bowing before this. And the Bible's clear that he just went and did the same thing that he always did. Right? Now I'm going to tell you what, man. Was the king happy about it? Oh, no, no, no. He was <laughs> wrathful. So was Nebuchadnezzar with the, with the uh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He was wrathful, man. The, the wording there with him was this rage. You know, because, why? You're not doing what I told you to do. By the way, listen to me. God's never like that with his people. He's not oppressive. Amen. He's, he's, he, he's a king of righteousness, amen. But he ain't going to force you to do righteousness. He desires you to do righteousness out of love for the king. Amen. And so these men, they ended up again. They, 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 their wisdom, but by following God, they pacified again. They ended up again. You remember old Darius? I love this. I love the narrative of, 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 of Daniel and the lions and the true story, by the way, amen, and how, how Darius is like, oh, man, what did I do? You know, about doing all this stuff and, and uh, went up to there. When Daniel was in the lion's den the next day, the morning, he, Daniel, <laughs> did you God say? You know why? He was unsure. He was unsure. He didn't know the one true God. Amen? God, help us, folks, to realize that we can do right and we can speak right, whether the person is, 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 is the lowest man on the totem pole or he's a king. You can speak to them and you can still do right in the midst of all the wrong. Amen? Amen. Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego prove that. You can still live in the midst of a, a wicked, ungodly kingdom and do what God would have you to do. The Bible's clear that in this world ye shall suffer tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Amen? Praise God you. help us. And then we want to finish with this, and I, I love this now. I, I, I really want to focus on uh, our king. Amen? But the Bible says in the light of a, uh, of a king's uh, countenance is life. And his favor is as a, a cloud of the latter rain. Now, folks, listen, it's, it's wonderful to know people. Did you know that? It is. Isn't it? To know people in high up positions? Now, let's not fool ourselves. Folks, listen, when you know somebody that's in a, in a high position, right? They can get some things done more so for you if you didn't know them. <laughs> but if, if you knew them on a, on a personal basis, right? And they, they, you found favor in them, correct? And they'd be willing to make things work for you, <laughs> right? That's a blessing, isn't it? And folks, I, we look back again on, on Hannah's situation, and, and, and really, folks, and, and Jesse was telling people this because it was true. There was no chance for her to be in this, this study pretty much, and that's the way we're looking at it. And yet this, this doctor who we didn't even know Decides to send it up to Mass General and, and she knows somebody there and, and, and working all this out if we didn't have that. But ultimately, listen to me, folks, we have someone higher Amen. Amen. than any king, than any president. But let's not fool ourselves. And we know President Trump, former President Trump came to Wilmington, right? What if I had invited him to Faith Baptist Church today? I like what Adrian Rogers said. Adrian Rogers has been dead for some 20 years. 
the place would be full. We'd have to have security. We'd have to have all kinds of things in here. It's be filled up because the president of the United States of America came to Faith Baptist Church. We might even make the newspaper. Might even make a bigger newspaper than the Chatham News. President came. And I'm not demeaning the president. I'm just telling you this. There's a higher one here. What do you mean? His name is Jesus. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And I can just tell you, when you have his smile, and I can tell you, folks, listen, I don't deserve his smile. None of us do. I'm a, I'm a Scrooge. I'm a money person. I think about what this is going to cost or what that's going to cost and how am I going to do this. And I'm just telling you, God's humbling me. He's humbling me. Trying to show me this is your fault. I own the cattle of a thousand hills and I own the hills and I own everything else. You need to humble yourself. You need to trust me. And I'm telling you, Over, over. He's hitting my problem. He might not hit your problem with me, but he's hitting my problem. Over and over. He's showing himself real. And I can trust him. I pulled into a parking lot. Do you realize how much it costs to park up there in Boston? $60 for three hours and above. I pull in a parking lot. And it says $60. And you know what I say? $60? Are you kidding me? How can I get out of this? And as I'm pulling in, cha-ching. One of my former basketball players, probably 20 21 years old, sent me $100. And okay. I had said to God in the car, it don't matter what it costs, God. I got to trust you. I go. The ladies told me that they would give me a little pass to go through and different things. And, and she didn't bring one for me to go. I kid you not, I'm standing in Mass General Hospital. To God be the glory. I look down at my feet and I pick up a little tag that says four hour parking. <laughs> I go to the cashier. It cost me $15 to park. $15. What I thought was going to be 60. I really came out $85 ahead. Somebody sent me 100 bucks. I go the next day. And I'm in the parking. We stayed there, had the park. Yeah, the same thing in another place. $60 is what it was supposed to cost me. Karen asked me as I'm going through the door, am I going to go up there? We're going to go give some cards to the, to the, the two assistants and the, the doctor that's helping Hannah. She said, are you going to ask them about the parking? I said, no. God says, no. She said she'd give me a parking ticket. God said, no. I know somebody that'll give me a parking ticket. She will. God says, no. I'll take care of it. I go in and Jesse's with me. I said, it's going to be 60 bucks. I hand her the card. She puts the card in. It says 60 bucks, and then she says to me, $15. Yeah, that's what that what else my look, Ma Jane. I'm like, huh? $15. Jesse said, how'd that happen? <laughs> There's only one way. There's only one way. I, I don't I don't know these people. 
I don't know any of them. But I know somebody. Praise the Lord. It sold for two days parking. I came out $70 a head. How'd that happen? There's only one. I like to know people. Don't you? I'm glad that, you know, at the end of the day, God has used people that are higher up than us to work some things out. But ultimately, he's a king. And when he's smiling on you, he doesn't have to smile on us. <laughs> he knows in our heart's heart that we don't deserve his smile. But he smiles when we do right. He knows our hearts. He said his favor is like a cloud of latter rain. Praise be to God, folks. Listen, we seek everybody else's favor. We try to please everybody we can rather than trying to please God. And all God is asking for us is us to give ourselves to him. And allow the king of kings to do his work. The Lord of lords, who is ruler over all things. Amen. I love Colossians. Was reading there, he said, all things were created by him and for him. Amen. For him. Do you realize this morning that you and I were created for him? Amen. 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 And he will take care of us. All through the, 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 the different things that and, and God wants kings to be this way. He does. Now, folks, listen. Oh, my goodness. And I know we got to go and pray. I'm reading this book by F.B. Meyer on Elijah. Oh, I want you to read there about Ahab. Ahab, listen, folks, was a wicked, ungodly king. And all he cared about was himself and his flocks all. That's why he was concerned. He was not concerned for the people and the rain and the drought that was taking place there and all the stuff that the people were suffering under. He could care less about that. All he cared about was him getting some rain for himself and his cattle and all the stuff he had. Read it. That's all he cared about. But not Elijah. That's what Elijah cared cared about the people. You cared about the glory of God. I tell you folks, listen, kings that are worth the weight in their salt, they care about the people. Yeah. They truly desire what's, what's good for the people. Amen. And I'm telling you, the northern kingdom had no king like that. The southern kingdom, they only had half their kings that really cared about the people. And I'm telling you, when you care about the people, you'll give them the truth. You give them the truth. You won't skirt the issues. Because why? You want the favor of the Lord on them just as much the favor of the Lord's on you. God's got to change our heart. Matthew chapter 6 says, where a man's heart, where a man's treasure is, there is where his heart is also. God help us to see the treasure that's in Christ. Amen. And we're born again, saved by the grace of God. And no matter what the kings of the earth might do, judgment's coming. He's going to take care of all of that. He hadn't called us to do it. But let's realize we've got a great, great king in heaven. Amen. That's seated at the right hand of the Father, and he's making intercession for you and me. And there's nothing that's caught him by surprise. He knows, and he'll help. Let's stand to our feet and have a word of prayer. Father, we're grateful for who you are as we go our separate ways. Father, I pray you bring us back tonight all those that can make it. Father, we just pray, Father, we take the message that we've heard today and that you'd etch it on our hearts, Father. Oh, dear God, we know earthly kings should do right. We know that any, any kingdom that's going to stand, it, it's going to stand, it will stand with righteousness, Father. You said righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. And so, Father, we pray you'd turn our hearts first and foremost Turn our church's hearts. And Father, turn this country around. Dear God, we pray, dear God, that you'd help us, Lord, to be salt and light. Father, we love you and praise you. Thank you for the message today that you have given us. 
For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Bob.